Getting a budget alert when your Google Cloud Platform costs exceed your budget is a great way to stay on top of your cloud costs. But cost controls are more about than just avoiding billing surprises. It's also important to provide the flexibility you need to scale and have a way to restrict unnecessary costs. On this episode of Beyond Your Bill, we'll talk about how programmatic budget notifications can be added to your budgets and give some examples for setting up advanced cost controls. In our previous video, we went through setting up budgets and alerts in the GCP console, which trigger email notifications. Since budget alerts are sent to billing account administrators and billing account users, you can easily control who gets those notifications. However, that means you may need to wait for those people to talk to the right teams and investigate if changes need to be made. If you want to put more proactive controls in place, programmatic budget notifications can allow you to run code based on your budgets. After choosing the thresholds when setting up a budget, you can connect Cloud PubSub to the budget, where you'll choose a project and a PubSub topic to receive notifications. Once the budget is publishing to PubSub, you can have any number of subscribers that will handle the notifications, such as Cloud Functions for our example. If you're not familiar with PubSub, think of it as a simple message handler which passes on any events, such as budget updates, to any services that are subscribed to it. Cloud Functions is a lightweight way and serverless way to run code and it's an ideal solution for quickly handling budget alerts. Any budgets you create with a PubSub topic will publish the current status of a budget multiple times per day rather than waiting for a threshold to be crossed. With each budget you set up, you can have both email notifications and programmatic notifications. When setting up advanced cost controls like this one, you'll want to make sure that your finance teams and your IT teams work together since this process involves both sides. Once you've got everything connected with PubSub, the cloud function will receive notifications with some important information, such as the billing account ID, the display name of the budget, the most recent threshold exceeded, and the amount of your costs for the scope of the budget. Now that you're writing code with this information, you can pretty much do anything the Google Cloud Platform API will let you do. One very common example is to post an update to Slack or other platforms, connecting any tools your team uses to stay on top of your costs. Again, this keeps people up to date but we can also automate direct cost controls to respond to these notifications. One of the more drastic actions you can take is to disable billing for a project entirely. For example, you may have a development or test environment and a dev team that constantly spins up resources in that environment. If someone on the team spins up an expensive resource, like a large compute instance, and then forgets to turn it off, it can rack up costs pretty quickly. One way to avoid this may be to set a budget and a programmatic budget notification that removes the billing account from the project after the specific cost is reached. It's important to note that when you disable billing on a project, all the billable resources for that project are shut down and then deleted. This is probably not something you want to do in a production environment, but it can be a quick way to make sure that you set a very hard limit for your costs on that specified project. Sometimes a more nuanced approach is better such as limiting the number of resources that can be spun up with quota, or simply stopping all the compute instances without deleting them. That way, you're not paying for them and the appropriate team can investigate why the usage was higher than planned. There's some sample code in the links below for sending alerts to Slack, disabling billing for a project, and for stopping all compute instances when you hit a specified budget amount. These are great starting points and they're easy to extend with just a little bit of code to fit your business needs. When testing your code, you can manually send PubSub messages so that you don't actually have to wait for the budget amount to be triggered. Another driver of unnecessary or accidental costs can be from resources that aren't being used optimally. Over-provisioned resources are larger than they need to be to serve their current workloads, and since this is the cloud, it can be easier to scale them down as needed. Idle or part-time resources can also be an easy target for saving costs, since they can be stopped or scaled down when they're not at peak usage. This can also be automated on a scheduled basis, such as regularly looking for resources that aren't being used and removing them. Two great examples of this are linked below. Both walk through taking advanced actions, such as removing unused IP addresses and attached disks, moving storage buckets to less expensive storage classes based on their usage, and setting up a schedule to start and stop compute engine instances. Using programmatic budget notifications is another step towards being able to set up cost controls that match with your business needs. Each business is different, so the specifics depend on the amount you're looking to automate and extend your cost controls, but the links below give you a great starting point and provide some sample code. Check them out and get a better handle on controlling your cloud costs.